glad to be here with you today. Uh, we're about to have some worship time, so will you please stand with us? This song is called Freedom. You can be seated. Good morning and happy 4th of July. We welcome you to Covington First United Methodist Church, and we thank you for choosing to spend a portion of your day worshiping with us. We also welcome those who are watching 
and listening by means of our live stream, and we extend a special welcome to any newcomers or first-time visitors who may be joining us today. What a joy and privilege it is to be able to gather and worship on the day we celebrate our country's independence. I invite you to bow with me now for our opening prayer. Gracious God, you have made all of the peoples of the earth for your glory. You invite us to serve you in this freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our nation a zeal for justice and strength for forbearance that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. We ask this on a day of celebration, a day of hope for a nation made free. And we ask this in the precious name of the one who welcomes us all to be free indeed. The name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
come to the end of the cell, do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Today, as as you're worshiping with us, either here in person or virtually, wherever you may be, that you're able to come to the altar and worship God and and feel God's presence and leave here with a renewed sense of honestly, the word for today. It's not just patriotic, but it's very theological. But the word for today is freedom. Second Corinthians three seventeen and eighteen says, "For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom." So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we change into his glorious image. I hope all of you experience the freedom of God 
the freedom we find in God. And the more free we are, the more we are made, we, the more we are the person that we are made to be, the more we're in God's glorious image. So we're going to sing a, a song. Um, it, it really ties into the message tonight. I, 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 today, I asked the uh, students to learn it. It was kind of funny because uh, this might be a new song for all of us, but really it's an old song. It's like 10 years old. It's an old Chris Tomlin song called Where the Spirit of the Lord Is. Um, and it is, it is based off of this text. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And I, I encourage the students as we are practicing. Um, I say students, and I look, and they're like old now. They, they were students at one point when we first started, and now they're like ancient geriatric age. And but I encourage the band when we when we when we started. Um, this is the, the theme of today is freedom. We're we're supposed to be upbeat. We're supposed to be excited. We're talking about some of the. Which it's just all good news today. You're not going to leave feeling bad about yourself at church today. This is all good news. So we're going to sing a song uh, called Where the Spirit of the Lord Is, There's Freedom. And I invite you to stand. I invite you to learn the lyrics. It's really quickly. Once you hear like one verse, you basically know the whole song. So please stand and worship uh, with us as we sing the song Where the Spirit of the Lord Is. We know where the Spirit of the Lord is. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is living. We know living in your freedom. Yours is the kingdom. We are yours. Yours is the kingdom.
Please bow your heads and pray with me. Father, we thank you for letting us come here together in a time of fellowship, worship, and learning. I thank you for keeping us all safe. I pray that you would speak through Andrew today as he delivers the message. And please help us all to understand in our hearts what freedom in you means. And it's in your mighty and powerful name we pray, Lord. Amen. Well, like I said before, it's good to see everyone here. I'm going to redecorate the stage a little bit here. I feel like I'm, like you ever have your parents come and then just like to your house and move everything and then they leave and it's all messed up. That's me right now. So I have to confess, 4th of July is one of my favorite holidays. I feel like it's one of the more underrated holidays. I feel like everyone talks about Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter, and there's always a lot of like big production and a lot of so much stuff going on for those holidays. But when it comes to the 4th of July, at least in my experience, I mean, we just get together and we cook out. We just shoot fireworks. We just have a good time. There might be a parade involved. It's just a lot of fun. And I have always been a fan of the ideology behind 4th of July. Um, freedom is one of our favorite things. You love freedom. I love freedom. How many of you absolutely hate your days off when you get them? Teachers, how many of you, when it comes to summer break, are like, oh, man, I get a break. I have freedom to do whatever I want. One of my favorite freedoms was when, when you turn 16 and you can finally drive legally on your own. Like, the, the, when you get your wheels and the freedom of life, I mean, no one's ever like, oh, man, now I get to basically go wherever I want, whenever I want. We love freedom. And then, the, of course, behind the holiday, we have the greater imagery of American freedom, the, the, the beautiful rights that we get to experience in this country that I think sometimes we forget that not every country has the freedom to any religion, the freedom to, to, of speech, the freedom to, to be who you want to be. And yeah, I know we're not perfect. I know we still have a ways to go as a country. But the fact that the ideals behind our country stand behind freedom, it's a beautiful thing. And today, as we think about freedom... It's important to consider the fact that God is the biggest fan of freedom. God, the, the phrase in the, the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, under God, liberty and justice for all. I don't know if we realize how theologically accurate that is. Liberty is one of God's biggest tenets, like one of the biggest characteristics of God. So this summer, we've been in a series called Hey God, It's Me. It's been a series as we're going through the Psalms. And I, I love it because psalms are basically prayers, not just basically prayers. I could have just said psalms are prayers. Most of them are from David. There's some other psalms from some other people. We're not so sure who they are. But I love it because even though David and I have completely different lives, I've never been chased by armies. I've never had to hide in caves. I've never been a king. The, the things that he, he talks to God about in his prayers, I can relate to and you can relate to. You may have never had David's experiences, but you have had the, feeling, uh, the experience of feeling scared or feeling excited or, or wanting to worship God or wanting to be angry at God. And when we read these Psalms, not only do we get a little a glimpse into David's life, but more importantly, we, we hear the interactions he has with God. And, the, and then we hear him share his own truth that he knows about God. And remember, the Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. So that's someone who I want to listen to. That's someone whose perspective I want to understand. So as we read the Psalms, one of my favorite things is when I hear David speak truth in his own life about what God's doing, it reflects into my own life. I read the things he says about God and how God's providing for him or taking care of him, and I'm realizing, oh wait, that's the same God that takes care of my stuff too. Today we are in Psalm 119, um, and the verses will be on the screen. Uh, this is a psalm uh, that talks a lot about freedom. Um, and, and, and so I just picked a few verses. I encourage you, if, if you have time later today, to go read the whole psalm if you want. Uh, but we're going to start in verse 45, and we're going to read just the first five verses. Um, feel free to read with me if you'd like. I know I'm the hardest person to follow reading because I stutter a lot. So 
Good luck. But we've been doing that for this series, um, and I, th- I think it's a great practice to be into. So uh, read with me Psalm 119, 45 through 50. I will walk in freedom, for I have devoted myself to your commandments. I will speak to the kings about your laws, and I will not be ashamed. How I delight in your commands. How I love them. I honor your love at your commands. I meditate on your decrees. I remember your promise to me. It is my only hope. Your promises revive me. It comforts me in all my troubles. So I'm going to share a few truths that I find in these psalms, um, in the, these five verses. Um, and, it's, and, and if you're like, he's basically just re-reading the psalm. You're right. It's pretty, pretty, to me, when I read this psalm, I was like, it's pretty much just right there. But these are truths that I think may be obvious that we don't think about enough. Because the question that we're going to be asking ourselves today, are you truly experiencing the freedom you find in God? I think for every single one of us, the answer is yes, but I could experience more. Or maybe some of us is no, I wish I was. And so my hope is that as every single one leaves today, or as every single one of us logs off virtually and gets back to our lake day or whatever cool, exciting Fourth of July thing that we're doing, that we all can better understand what it means to live into the freedom we find in God. Because there's no freedom like the freedom that you have in God. And the first truth we, we learn from the psalm is right there in verse 45. We walk in freedom by devoting ourselves to God's commandments. God is all about freedom. God gave us free will when he created us. Jesus died on the cross to free us from sin. Jesus gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit, which with the Holy Spirit, we are able to become the best versions of ourselves every single day. In every decision we make, in every choice that we have, in every uh, problem that goes on in our life, we have the freedom to choose the right thing with the help of the Holy Spirit. God's a huge fan of freedom. But it says right there, the way we follow, or the way we walk in freedom is by following God's commandments. The next one is walking in freedom means that we are not ashamed to speak about God. How many of you feel like you're fantastic public speakers? Anyone want to do this next week? We'll take sign-ups or outs. How many of you feel like you're fantastic salesmen? Like you could totally be a salesman. Anyone? I have a secret. I th- or well, I have a conspiracy theory. I think every single one of us is actually a fantastic salesman. You just have to find the right thing. My friend calls it once you press the nerd button. Once you press the button of something you just absolutely care about, man, you are going to sell it. The, I mean, we all, you all have your favorite sports team. You all have your favorite TV show. Someone start that conversation with you, and you'll be all about it. You all have your favorite gossip of what just happened last week. Oh, man, let me tell you about this, and let me tell you why you should believe the way I think. And you, got, you, can, you can speak for days. You are, no, 45 minutes up in front of a Sunday morning sermon wouldn't be enough. Was that a little judgy? I don't know. So here's something interesting about me and Michael. We have common interests, and then we have some interests that neither one of us could care one bit about. So if he starts talking to me about Alabama football, I could care less. That's a real short, one-sided conversation. Oh, uh-oh. Because I'll, I, don't, I don't know how to come out of that one. At the same way, <laughs> if I talk to him about any kind of Marvel or DC movie or superheroes, one-sided conversation. He could care less. However, if you bring up any food topic, we both will speak for days and have very strong opinions. And other staff people in the office can tell you that we sound like we're arguing in such friend. Like when we talk about how boneless wings are better than traditional wings, and he's so incorrect. Like he's, he, we knock out, drag out fights. You want to get him started? Ask him about good root beer versus bad root beer. He's got strong opinions, and I do too. And you all know I'm right. That's our nerd button, where we can connect and relate. There are certain things that you care about that you could speak so much. And the big question is, what is more important than sharing God with someone? What is more important when you feel the freedom of the Lord, helping other people feel that as well? A thought I had yesterday when I was rereading these notes, almost for myself, was 
if it's if you like if it's easier for you to tell someone about your favorite TV show than for you to strike up a conversation about God, or if you feel more comfortable, you know, being super passionate about your the best sport teams than you do about sharing, like inviting someone to church, there might be a problem there. And when I say that, I'm not just poking at you and not identifying it. I'm, I'm pointing that one to myself as well. Sometimes we get so passionate about these things that are so less important than God. But when we have the freedom, walking in the freedom means we are not ashamed to speak about God. Next one, we sh- um, that's not the next point. Um, this is the next point. We should delight and honor Yes, I thought I was about to give you the fourth point. I didn't want to ruin the surprise. We should delight in, honor, and love all of God's commands. How many of you love following rules? Anyone? Yes, follow rules. And a lot of times people think Christianity is all about rules. A lot of times people think it's all about, like, the Bible is just a do and a don't book, and you got to kind of figure out what you can do and what you can't do, and you got to follow it. And if you don't, God's just going to be up there with a magnifying glass ready to burn you like an ant. That is not the case. We worship a God of grace, of freedom, of love, of mercy. And you know what? If, if you, you know, don't do this. Don't test me on this. But if you, like, on your way out, cuss out your entire table, and you walk out, you're not going to get struck by lightning. Please don't do that. It's not very nice. You'll make people think less of you. But you could do it, and God wouldn't be like, I'm done with you. But when we follow the rules that God puts forth for us, when we follow God's commandments, that is how we are able to live our best lives. The reason you do things like don't cuss out random people, or the reason you do things like honor the sanctity of marriage, or the reason you do things like like don't go out and get drunk all the time, is because you know it's better for you when you don't do those things. We all understand this system because we've all been kids before. How many of you had parents who like put you on a real strict diet plan? I forgot a really important Bible verse before I get to the strict diet plan illustration. This is my first time giving this sermon and it sounds like it's my first time ever speaking in front of people. But um, we, we often, we think about the Bible and we think about all the rules that could possibly be set in the Bible, but Jesus made it really easy for us. Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40. Someone asked, teacher, what is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? He wanted to know the most important rule. If I could just follow one thing correctly, what would it be? And Jesus wrapped literally every single rule and commandment into two statements. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based off these two commandments. I love that last statement because it gives me permission to, if I, do, if I only do one thing, it's love God, love others. And I think there's also, we should also mention that there's also love, love others as you love yourself. So you should add loving yourself as part of that too. Love God, love others, love yourself. If you're doing that really well, if that's really what you're worried about, you're going to follow the rest of the rules and commandments. Or if you're like, just give me one thing to try, that's what to do. And when we do that, we live a life where we end up choosing to follow all the rules that we see and guidelines and commandments of God. And we understand this because we've all been kids before. So I just established that none of you had strict parents. My mom, my mom was a food Nazi. She's Italian, so I don't know if she'd appreciate that joke. But we had this rule, like, I could only have one dessert a day. I could only, ha- and I, I could not eat, like, my dessert before I ate the rest of my dinner or the rest of my life. It was always the last thing. Even when I went, uh, and my favorite dessert was the Swiss cake rolls. Those are, those are my favorite ones. And, like, I always wanted to try to sneak them in there. But she's like, not before, not before dinner, not before lunch. I was so terrified of my mom that when I was in school and I had my brown bag lunch and I could have easily ate like my Swiss cake rolls first, I was afraid she was just going to jump out of the bushes <laughs> and smite me. I-, I was afraid that she had like somehow hired some of my friends to be spies for her. To be fair, she actually told me that one time. I hired some of your friends to be spies for me, so I'll know. And then I had this epiphany moment when I went to college. 
I remember it was the first time me and my roommates went, room, uh, went, went grocery shopping for our room. And so I'm in Walmart, because you know we classy grocery shopping when you're in college. And I get to the hostess like, area, and I see all the Swiss cake rolls in the world. And I realized Nina Davis isn't around. She's five hours away. I'm an adult. I'm a grown man. I'm 18. I, can, I could buy this entire thing if I wanted to and eat Swiss cake rolls for the rest of my life. And that's why I look like this. <laughs> but I didn't because obviously that is an incredibly unhealthy decision. Obviously, that would make you super sick. And I knew that in that moment, so I, I only bought five boxes. <laughs> Point being, we follow the rules because we know our life is better when we do so. And God has a way of life for each and every single one of us. And some people who don't know God and don't know the freedom found in the Lord, they may look at it and they'd be like, man, that just looks less fun or less good. But they couldn't be further from the truth. When you follow God's rules for your life, you're living your best possible life. And no, you don't have to, but you're the one who miss out when you don't. The last thing I noticed in, this, in, in, the, in these psalms um, was remembering God's promises gives us hope, it comforts us, and it revives us. I love this. We find hope in God's promise, and that's how we find freedom. I don't know if you've taken a while to think about all the amazing God promises that you can find in the Bible or all the amazing truths about God that are, are relevant to your life every single day, whether you're having a good day or especially if you're having a bad day. I could, I could like spend the rest of the, our time together just sharing God's promises to you and not, fit, and not tell you all the promises. But I'm just going to tell you five. I hope one of these is something that you really need to hear. Here are five promises we can see in the Bible that God shares with us that should give us hope and should comfort us and should revive us. God is your strength. God never leaves you. God has a plan to prosper you. God will fight for you. And God will always love you. I don't know about you, but on any given day, I really need to hear one of those promises. I really need to be reminded that God will always love me or that God has a plan for me. When nothing else is working out, it's nice to know, like, God, God knows what's going on. When you, feel, when you feel completely lost and, like, that nobody's even noticing you, know that God always loves you. When you feel like you don't have the strength to keep going, knowing that God is your strength to keep going. And knowing even when you don't have the strength to keep going, God will tag in. God will fight for you. And then there's this, none of these promises have an expiration day. God will never leave you. And all these points that we see in Psalm 45 connect, if you think about it. Having hope in God gives us the freedom, which leads us to want to follow God's rules, because it leads us to our best life. And when we're living that life, we can't help but not share it with other people. It's just like when you find that TV show that everybody needs to be watching. Have you seen that show? I've been telling everyone about Fast and Furious 9. I sound like a fanatic, but I'm a huge fan. Have I been doing that much about sharing about Jesus? I'll be honest, no. <laughs> Whenever I, I find a new restaurant, I'm the first to tell you how amazing it is. I'll tell you what to order. I'll go with you. We can order together. I'm like the best concierge to a restaurant. Like, come on, we'll do it together. Are you nervous? I got you. Trying to get someone to go to church? Less enthusiasm. But man, what if I had that same enthusiasm? What if I was as enthusiastic about bringing someone to a place where they can experience the freedom of the Lord as I am about telling them my favorite sub sandwich? Which one would change their life more? God wants us to be free. And the opposite of freedom is slavery. We don't like slavery. No one's ever like, man, I just wish I could make less decisions. I wish someone would just tell me what to do and I have no say in it whatsoever. Romans 8, verses 15 through 17 says this. So you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. 
Instead, you've received God's spirit, and he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, t- together with Christ, we are heirs of, heirs of God's glories. But if we are able to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. How cool is it to picture that you share God's glory? You're, you have so much freedom that the byproduct is you just to live this amazing, glorious life. But the opposite of that is slavery. At some point, I think we can all admit that we're slaves to something if we're not experiencing God's freedom. You can be slaves to your own calendar, to your schedule, to your work life. You can be slaves to what people think about you. You can be slaves to your problems to your issues, to your trauma even. I mean, I know some of us, a lot of us have gone through so many things. And it takes time and it takes trust in the Lord, but we, there's a moving forward process. But how many of us sometimes are slaves to our own trauma? There are so many different ways that we could choose freedom, but instead we choose slavery. We can be slaves to our jobs. We can be slaves to our family. We can be slaves to the church. If you're someone who's never said no to the church, might I encourage you to do that sometime, but not when I call you. Here's the thing about freedom that kind of stinks, is you you have to choose to be free. No one's going to make that choice for you. You have to choose to live a life where the freedom is found in the spirit of the Lord. That's why it's called freedom and not force something. That's why it's called not slavery. So we're going to end with singing a song that is one of my favorite worship songs. I think they're sick of it because I'm always like, we got to end with No Longer Slaves. But I love this song so much. And I remember the first time I heard it. It was my second year as a youth pastor here. Um, I was in grad school and I was at a school retreat. um, And life was so hectic. This would have been like 2017-ish. I don't know. I had like huge finals coming up, so I was stressed out. I think there was some stuff going on in my life, so I was stressed out. And what was really hitting me was there were a lot of stuff going on with the kids in our youth group that I had no control over. Terrible things happening in their life that I couldn't fix. I knew about, but there was nothing I could do. I just had to kind of see and watch and be like, well, that stinks. And it was breaking my heart. I was a slave to my my fear. I was a slave to my worry. I was a slave to my anxiety. There was, you know, giving it to God, I was just holding on to it like, this is just a mess. I do feel like I should tell you, you know, several years in advance, now in 2021, I can say that God provided for all those situations. I don't know if you know many stories of a lot of students in our youth group, but God has quite literally used the work that this church has done in their lives to save their lives. A lot of those kids who had terrible situations in 2017 are better now, are in better environments now. And that's a lot of that's because of those of you that help in the youth ministry, those of you that pray for the youth ministry, and those of you that help fund the youth ministry. The work that you put in and the ministry you put in to make a difference has made a difference. And I love being able to look back and be able to see that. But in 2017, I wasn't seeing that. 2017, I was super stressed, super angry, super lost, super broken, just seeing all this brokenness. And the premise of this song is we are no longer slaves for fear for we're children of God. And when I heard this song, it was like God was picking me out and saying, give it up. You don't have control over this, but I do. Just exist, just keep going, and live in the freedom that I've gifted you with. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So we're going to sing this song, No Longer Slaves. I invite you to stand and sing it. If, if, you, if you know it, great. If you do not know it, uh, it's like every worship song, super easy to learn. So please, please stand and sing with us. And I'm going to pray before we sing this song. Thank you, God, for all that you give us. And going forward, I know someone in this room or someone listening with us virtually online needs to hear this message. They need to hear that they're no longer slaves to whatever they might be a slave to. They need to hear about the freedom that we find in you. So I ask that you provide that. I ask that your Holy Spirit moves in big ways. Thank you for how it's already moved in this service. And we ask that for that one person who we may or may not know, maybe they're sitting next to us, maybe they're not, maybe they're, they're somewhere, or maybe, maybe it's even us. We pray that your Holy Spirit moves in big ways to help us experience the freedom that you have intended for us. So your son's most precious name we pray. Amen.
a slave to fear. I am a child of mine. I'm no longer a slave to fear. is the spirit and wherever the spirit of the lord is there is freedom so all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the lord and the lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image one of my favorite disney movies is aladdin the old version not the new one even though i like will smith the ending of the movie if you haven't seen it i'm about to spoil it but it's been out for a while he, yeah, Aladdin has three wishes, and he has one wish left. Does anyone know what his last wish is? Yes, he frees the genie. At one point, he just looks at the genie, and he says, be free. And that's my hope for every single person who's worshiping with us online and all of us who are worshiping here in this room, is as we go out, we be free. We do our best to, to be the glorious image of God that we were created to be. So what's holding you back from that? I don't know the answer to that. But something tells me you do. Or something tells me that you can take some time today and pray about it and sit, in, sit with God and figure it out and ask for God to free you from whatever is holding you back. So this is the easy part. Whenever we come to church every Sunday morning, hearing the message, giving the message, that's like 10% of the job. It's so easy. It's going home and going back to our lives and actually living what we hear which is the hard part. So my encouragement to you is go and be free. God, thank you for everything that you give us. Thank you for the many blessings. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us. Thank you that there is nothing that can hold us back, that, that you've, already, you've already overcome everything we would possibly have to overcome, and that with your power, with your strength, with your comfort, and with your love, we can always overcome anything that comes our way. I pray for my friends here. I pray that they have an amazing week. I pray for those that are traveling, those that are at the lake right now or out of their 4th of July plans. I pray that they have a safe and awesome and enjoyable time. And I pray that every single one of us has a renewed understanding of what it means to be free because of the Spirit of God. So in your son's most precious name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is